In the labyrinth of our dreams and fears about the future, artificial intelligence has quickly become a part of our lives. But as we stand at the brink of this new era, the question looms, are we spinning a dystopian tale? Or are we on the verge of a creative renaissance? By now, you've probably seen just how powerful Photoshop's generative fill tool is. Although Photoshop's roots are in graphic editing, this is a game changer for us video creators. Many of you have commented asking for a more detailed tutorial after I posted a short video about this. So because of high demand, let's explore this further. Here are three ways that this tool can help us elevate our video creations and push the boundaries of our imagination. The frame that we capture in camera. It's a choice that once made used to be set in stone. But what if there was a way to push the boundaries of those four edges? One of the most practical uses for this tool is extending your background. This is incredibly easy with a locked off shot, but can also work with a handheld shot. First, take a still from your video. I'm using Premiere Pro, so I just have to hit the camera icon and choose where I want to save the image. Open up the image in Photoshop Beta and change the canvas size so it's larger. Then select the area around the image with the rectangle marquee tool. And I recommend having a little bit of overlap with the original image. Invert your selection by hitting this button so that the area around your image is what's selected. Now this is where the fun begins because you can describe in the prompt box what you want the background to be. And then just click generate. But if you are curious what the AI overlord Adobe Sensei comes up with by default, just leave the box blank and click generate. Save the PSD and import it back into Premiere. In this case, I just want to leave the generated image layer visible. Make a new sequence with your PSD layer and drag your original video into it as well. It should fit pretty snug into your generated image, but play with the scale if it doesn't. Now you can bring the sequence into your original timeline and scale it to fit the dimensions of your video. So that is the basic workflow of using generative fill in your videos. Great job on following so far because I know how hard it can be to wrap your head around using another program. It's not a very streamlined workflow, but just like how content aware fill is integrated into After Effects, I'm sure that this will eventually be integrated in the future as well. But with this out of the way, let's explore some of the more powerful applications using After Effects. Extending the background of a moving shot sounds tricky, but it's not too tough if you know some basic tracking. Bring your video into After Effects and create a new composition with your video. Find a frame that you want to use for the generative fill tool and add a marker so that you remember. Then export that frame either into a Photoshop file or just a PNG if you have FX console. Go through the same workflow that I went over earlier to get your extended background. And import the Photoshop file back into After Effects. Just like before, I'll only leave the generated fill layer visible. The plan here is to track that Photoshop file to your moving shot. You can either use the After Effects built-in tracker if you're already familiar with that, but I like using Mocha AE since I find it way more powerful. In my case, I'm just tracking along the outer side of the shot. What you want to do next is create a null object and export the tracking data to that null object. Let's rename the null object to tracking so we stay organized. Then let's parent our generated image to the null object. But make sure the playhead is where you placed your marker earlier or things could get a little bit weird. We'll want to scale down both the image and original footage. So let's create another null object, but rename it to something like scale control. Let's parent both the tracking layer and original footage layer to this. We can then scale this down to affect both the parented layers at once. Now your generated image moves in sync with your shot, giving you a wider shot that looks like it was filmed that way in camera. Creating the perfect image is a lot like conducting an orchestra. Every element should play in harmony. But what if an object in your perfect shot insists on singing out of tune? Whether it's a car parked in the background or a C-stand on set, Photoshop's generative fill makes erasing unwanted objects effortless. Bring a still from your video into Photoshop, use the marquee tool to draw over the area that you want to remove, and hit generate. Bring the generated image into your video editor and place it on top of your video like we went over earlier. If it's a moving shot, just track it back into your video with After Effects. No need for a time machine or second chances to correct mistakes and refine your vision. Ready for the grand finale? I've saved the most powerful way to use generative fill for last because it has the power to rewrite stories, reshape memories, and even change people's realities. I know, it sounds pretty dramatic, but 
I'm talking about transforming one object to another in your videos. Instead of erasing an object, we can reimagine what it could be by using the same methods we went over earlier, but this time with more emphasis on the prompt box, a bridge that connects our imagination to the AI's capabilities. It makes me wonder whether we creators in the future will remain in control of our imagination or if we'll pass that baton over to our creations. We can only hope that in the end, it's not the tool, but the hands that wield it that determine the future.